Are you fed up of having nut juice? Then, then consider getting some nut shake, which is so good it was reduced not once, not twice, three times. Let's, let's try Let's try this. Let's try this. Nut shake, the colour of, of dysentery. That's why it was reduced three times. Jesus. It says it's a heavenly blend, but it's got like the, the consistency of gone off milk. Mmm. I'll probably finish it. No, I probably won't. Who pays me four quid for that? That's bang out of order. But what isn't bang out of order is this tag. Now, th there's two of these going up this week. So hold on to your horses. If you if you think this installment's good, there's a, there's a second one. And this is the blind page 112 tag who who i'm doing with the lovely gunpowder fiction and plot who i have just positive words to say about they did a fantastic channel completely underrepresented i will link their video because these are going up at the same time and their channel down below 100 percent recommend you go follow them and i know they have some lovely words to say about me uh we were tagged by kieran at kd books thanks Thanks. Like your um, new face. <laughs> <laughs> Much better. Oh, it's dripping. Why didn't I think that? Anyway, you might know the aim of the game. You might not. Basically... We have both sent each other an excerpt from three books, all of them from page 112. No context, no nothing, just that. Now, to make this a little bit more spicy, a little bit al dente, I'm going to put some predictions um, into this. So I've not read any of these, but I think they will have sent me more male authors. I think they would have sent me more male. I think they would have sent me more male. My second prediction is that I think they're going to go more towards classics than they are modern and contemporary novels. Based on what they read and I read, Scott and Nell would know that I don't read older books, so it might be an easy choice to pick three books that I haven't read to just go back in time so I, th I think they're going to be older than they are going to be more towards the modern day and my third prediction is that i only have two predictions that's my third one so let us start book one simmer and again the lifeblood of the plants drift into the florentine flask this often went on all night long baldini watched the hearth grenouille kept an eye on the flasks. There was nothing else to do while waiting for the next bath. This is ringing a bell. French names. This is ringing a bell somewhere. They sat on footstools by the fire under the spell of the rotund flagon, both spellbound, if for very different reasons. Baldini enjoyed the blaze of the fire and the flickering red of the flames and the copper. He loved the crackling of the burning wood, the gurgle of the alembic for it was like the old days you can lose yourself in it he fetched a bottle of wine from the shop for the heat made him thirsty and drinking wine was like the old days too and then he began to tell stories from the old days endless stories about the war and the spanish succession when his own participation against the austrians had had a decisive influence on the outcome about the camisards together with whom he had haunted the Sevens, about the daughter of a Ugrin in the Estrel. If anyone's French watching, I'm so sorry. As a little bit of a fun fact, I only studied French for five days in my school and you basically did like a crash course in French and then next week was like a crash course in German and then that you had to decide which one you're going to do your GCSE in. So uh, J'habite à Wales. Je m'appelle Kiran, un de toi à Shijika. Who, intoxicated by the scent of lavender, had compiled with his wishes about a forest fire that he had damned near started and which would then have been properly set to tire Provence ablaze. As sure as there 
was a heaven and hell for a biting minstrel had been blowing and over and over he told about distilling out the open fields at night by moonlight accompanied by wine and the screech of cicadas and about the lavender oil that he had created one so refined and so powerful you could have weighted it out in silver about his apprentice years in genoa about his journeyman years in the city of Grasse, Grasse, Gwa. You don't, you don't say a lot of the, the letters in French. I'm going to go for Gra, <laughs> where there were as many perfumers as shoemakers. Oh my God, this is Patrice Suskind's perfume, isn't it? Oh, oh, it's perfume by Suskind. It has to be. I can't tell you how much I hate Suskind's perfume. I think it's perfume. I don't read many books with French names. So as soon as they start coming out, um, it, it's quite obvious. I don't think this is Welbeck, and I don't think this is Hugo. So, ah, oh, the fact it says as many perfumers as shoemakers. Oh no, they've chosen perfume. It's Patrice Suskind. It's gritty. I will put money on the fact that that is perfume. Let's go book two. Oh, okay. It's split oh, across the page. Okay, I'm just going to read from chapter 10 onwards because I think that would make a bit more sense. Outside in the valley again, the sky is still limited by the bluffs on either side of the river, but they are closer together and closer to us than they were this morning. The valley is narrowing as we move toward the river's source. We're also at the kind of beginning point in the things I'm discussing, at which one can at last start to talk about Phaedrus's break from the mainstream of rational thought in pursuit of the ghost of rationality itself. There was a passage he had read and repeated to himself so many times, it survives intact, it begins. In the Temple of Science there are many mansions, and various indeed are they that dwell therein and the motives that have led them here. Many take to science out of a joyful sense of superior intellectual power. Science is their own special sport to which they look for vivid experience at the satisfaction of ambition. Many others are to be found in the temple who have offered the products of their brains on this altar for purely utilitarian purposes. Were an angel of the Lord to come and drive all the people belonging to these two categories out of the temple, it would be noticeably emptier, but there would be still some men of both present and past times left inside. If the types we have just expelled were the only types we were, the temple would... Um, okay. Um, ah... Uh... <laughs> Those were words on a page. I'm a bit lost on that one. Um, right, okay. Come on, come on, Keelan, commentary, you can do this. I really don't know. I, I feel as though those, I feel as though those two parts are, are, are really separate. Like, they don't seem to be, like, part of the same narrative, which, which intrigues me, and I quite like authors who do that, and I, and one, one book that won the book at his possession, which is a, a, a love story, um, about two people who love poetry and the poetry's in the book so you kind of explore this narrative at the same time as the poetry i've not read it so it might not be anything like that but that intrigues me um so so this one gets a solid interested um uh tick mark if that means anything um <laughs> Hmm. Let's just do the final one. Book three. John Milton was supple and concise. Like Washington Irving, he could be reversed with good effect whenever he grew monotonous. Furthermore, he enabled Major Major. Oh, it's Catch-22! No! <laughs> no, it's Catch-22! Oh my god, it's the only Major Major. It has to be. It has to be. It has to be. Ah. John Milton proved fruitful in still one more respect. He was versatile. A major major soon found himself incorporated in the signature and fragments of imaginary dialogues 
Thus, typical endorsements on the official documents might read, John, Milton is a Satanist. Or, have you seen Milton, John? One signature of which he was especially proud read, is anyone in the John, Milton? John Milton threw open whole new vistas filled with charming and inexhaustible possibilities that promised to ward off monotony forever. Major Major went back to Washington Irving when John Milton grew monotonous. Oh, it's Catch-22. Catch-22 is the novel everyone says is like satire 101. It's funny and it's not funny. You get you get rubbish like this all the way through it. Major Major had bought the dark glasses and false moustache in Rome in a final futile attempt to save himself from the swampy degradation into which he was steadily sinking. It's Catch-22. First there had been the awful humiliation of the great loyalty oath crusade Catch-22, but not only of the 30 or 40, 22 people circulating comprehensively loyal oath would even allow him to sign Catch-22. Then, just when that was blowing over, there was a matter of Catch-22 Clevenger's plane disappearing so mysteriously in the air with every member of the crew and blamed for the strange mishap centred balefully on him because he never signed any of those loyal oaths. The dark glasses had large magenta rims, the false black moustache was a flamboyant organ grinders and he wore them both to the basketball game one day when he felt he could endure his loneliness no longer. He affected an air of jaunty familiarity as he sauntered to the court and prayed silently that he would not be recognised. The others pretended not to recognise him and he began to have fun. Just as he congratulated himself on the innocent route, he was bumped hard by one of the opponents and knocked to his knees. Soon he was bumped hard again and it dawned on him that they did recognise him and that they were using his... If I have guessed two out of these three, I will be very proud. Right, I, I'm going to say is the second one, Possession by A.S. Byatt, then. I'm going to go for that, which would mean my prediction of do they choose more men would be correct. And do they choose more classics than modern and contemporary? I mean, I'm not sure when Perfume came out, but I'm pretty sure that's a classic, not a modern classic. And Catch-22 is definitely like a modern classic. I want to give myself a tick on this. Okay, let, let's see the answers. Book one. Perfume. Patrick Susskind. You probably know about this book already. Oh my god, I do. It's horrendous. But it doesn't look like you've read it yet. Four bloody times I've tried to read Perfume. I know the first few pages where Susskind is describing the smell of Paris is very opulent, very rich. Cliche to, to use this word, but very, very sensual um, to most. Utterly boring. I'm not a big fan of, like, overtly descriptive writing. Um, I do feel as though it's kind of just, like, hitting me over the head of, you know what things smell like? And I'm like, yes, it's kind. I have a nose. I've smelt some things. And as they, as they say in this email, um, it combines literary fiction with a gory, macabre ambiance, which it, it, it does. And that, like, gothic, and I, I feel for me, Perfume, um, again, I'm not sure when it was written, but it has this, like, Victorian gothic vibe to it, which is something I don't like. It, it comes across, rather than ambiance, it, it comes across as, like, melodramatic. Similar with the picture of Dorian Gray. Some people love it. E even the bit where Dorian Gray like like b pushes a body into like a vat of acid. I was a bit like oh, okay then Dorian Gray like calm down you look fine. The bit that hurts me the most is that Scott and they'll have called this very well executed. I mean it does what it says on a tin. If you've picked up a book or perfume expect it to be like, smelly. <laughs> oh, Patrick, I have tried so many times. I would say, Patrick, this is, I would say Perfume is the book I have been gifted the most. And people have, like, put it in my hands being like, this is a Kieran book. Like, I know it's a Kieran book. And I've tried it 
four times, and I'm always like, oh no, stop. Oh, the smells, it smells. Book two was an A.S. by its possession, but it is a book I've, I've, I've always been curious about, based on the fact that it has a very cult status, but I have no idea what the book is about. And it's Robin M. Persig, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And I've spoken to some people who have read it, and maybe it's, maybe it's because they haven't read it, but they give me a very, like, vague response of, like, it, you just gotta read it. And I'm like, I mean, you can say that about, like, any book. Like, oh, what's the goldfinch about? Just gotta read it. It's like, I, I know that. But it seems as though, is it a, a book that's just difficult to kind of um, grapple and manipulate with? And also I feel as though Robert M. Persig, like, for, for me, kind of, like, sits at the level of, like, Kerouac's On the Road and Fear and Lovin in Las Vegas. But I feel as though Persig's name isn't as um, easy to come by as, say, Jack Kerouac and Hunter S. Thompson. Like, I feel as though uh, those people are kind of, like, embodied in their works where Persig kind of feels... Look, I'll be honest, had the name not been in this email, I wouldn't have been able to tell you who the author is. But the book, like, straight away. I think it's interesting because out of the three, book two is the one I was more drawn towards. But I don't know if that's because of, of the writing or the fact that I know book one. And, and I know book three. It's catch 22. Oh, no. Oh, catch 22. Oh, more like boring 24 7 i'm sorry mum, if you're watching um not that she's read it she doesn't read not that she's illiterate she won't pick up a book this novel is the least in your lane of the three but call it a hunch we suspect you might like it it's literally slapstick comedy about war it uses satire and criticizes the armed forces but it's boring Catch Rate 2 is kind of a product of its time, and because it's based on satire, therefore must be funny, means that it, it kind of sets itself up to fail <laughs> if you don't find it funny. And I don't tend to find slapstick funny. To get a chuckle out of me when reading is like a hard task in itself. But Catch 22 isn't funny, it kind of crosses into like silliness and this is where it, it, like included in this kind of like slapstick style for me it comes across as childish um but like not in like the best way if you want a left-wing recommendation on like would i like catch 22 and its humor i'd probably recommend the frightening rain of phil by george sauna which is like 60 pages long like utterly childish like a little bit bizarre there's there's some like childish elements and silliness that that comes with it but it, but it's it's 60 pages on like four very like monty python-esque um and again i don't think monty python's that great sorry world someone's got to say it now i was still open to catch 22 when i found out george clooney was doing a, a TV adaptation which kind of spurred me to read the book first before for watching that and I thought it was just me not getting on with the novel and then I watched a TV program and equally was was bored and, and didn't find it funny um it, it's a book and this is nutshake Oh my god, that doesn't get any better. Thank you again for the lovely Scott and Nell for, for sending me these. And please do check out their video where I have sent the one author who Scott says he hates, but I adore. I've sent them a little bit of a left field choice and a Pulitzer finalist who I really hoped would have won. Check them out. I'll see you uh, sometime. Bye.